Hi, and welcome to Wow Talk. My name is Donna Capacity. And my name is Darlene. And today we're going to talk about health in the blind spot when your symptoms are gone. When your symptoms are gone, exactly. completely gone, or when you don't feel any symptoms, or both? Well, a symptom is something you feel. Okay. So usually people seek health care when they've received a diagnosis and it's concerning, or and, and that might also be something that they don't feel, like cholesterol, or they're in pain. Pain is the number one reason anybody sees a naturopath, a medical doctor, a chiropractor, a massage therapist, a dentist, right? So pain pain is the number one driving force for patients seeing healthcare providers. So for for my experience as a naturopath, um, that pain could actually be a little more specific, like a migraine or irritable bowel syndrome. It could be fatigue. It could be infertility. So that's not pain, but but people come in with something. Yeah. And then when we've done a treatment plan, that symptom goes away, that condition goes away, and and then the patient disappears because they're symptom-free. And I spend a lot of my time teaching patients about the world of the invisible, things you don't feel. And for instance, I've I've worked with a lot of cancer patients, and very often what happens is I'm walking through this journey with them. They're on chemo, off chemo. I'm taking different supplements and herbs in and out of their treatment plan to not interfere with the performance of the chemo and to sponge up the side effects. And then as they go through this process in in oncology, they have the official graduation date as five years after being five years cancer free and then they kind of kick you out the door which is great I've been to several of those parties but but then what happens is the patient may still have symptoms so they might still be my patient but they leave the world of oncology Mm -hmm. and they're still dealing with maybe some of the after effects of the chemo sure you know I can attest to that yeah what were you going to say Uh, neuropathies yes I've got that still yeah yeah or um, digestive things, or or they want their hair to grow back, something like that. So the disease is gone, but they're in a stage that we call dysfunction as naturopaths. Things could be working better, but there's nothing serious going on. So then let's say we go through that stage and we address and correct all the symptoms and those uh, expressions of dysfunction in the body. And then that's where the patients often fall out of my schedule. And and I feel like, okay, I get it. They need a break. They don't want to see any healthcare people for a while. But then I think about them. It's like, hey, where did you go? You didn't finish taking all the calcium you needed. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. It's like going off the antibiotics too early almost. You know, yeah. I, I hate to bring that word up, but it's funny because the symptoms will go away, but they say finish the treatment. Yes. So it, but it's easy to think, oh, I'm fine. I'm better. I don't need to take these. Yeah. 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 So so mm-hmm. that's the world of the things that you can't feel. So so in that level of health, you might be dealing with bone density. You don't feel that. Cholesterol, sure. you don't feel that. High blood pressure, you don't feel that unless it's extremely high. Mm-hmm. Um, and d- mineral deficiencies or nutrient deficiencies, you don't feel. But I test people's hair and I look at their blood. And so that's what I mean by you're not finished yet. Yes. Okay. So what are your thoughts on that then? What do we need to do as individuals, as patients to stay on top of it other than coming? Well, I mean, we want to book appointments with someone like yourself. Anyway. Follow doctor's orders. Okay, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. So usually I, I start stretching out the appointments at that point because I can, because the patient's doing well. So I'll say, okay, you could use more zinc technically to be no longer deficient or more calcium, but you can give yourself a break over the summer and then resume your zinc and your D and come back like in October. So I might give them um, a longer stretch of time. And um, but but the good thing I have to say at this point, 20 percent of my practice are patients who independently come and ask for prevention. 
Well, that was going to be my next question. Exactly. You always beat me to it. Is do you find that a lot of people come in as they're getting older? Does age play a factor? Is that a factor in that? Is uh, someone maybe feeling just ah not so great, but not really? They can't really pinpoint a specific symptom. Do you find definitely that? definitely a part of it is people are more informed now. They're questioning. Things like toxicity and their environment at work or home. They know they've been exposed to something. Um, certainly with age, people become more interested about health and preserving it. So as people become middle-aged, they might be thinking that their parents or older siblings suffered from ABC and they want to look for their own risk factors. And and sometimes the family members of my patients who came in with the condition have seen the kind of things that we've done and they're interested in wanting the same test that their spouse with cancer had. It's like, hey, you could test my hair too, right? So so prevention, those people are coming from a few different um, schools of thought, which is great. But I'm I'm so proud that 20% of my patients get it, um, that prevention is much better. And, and when I work on cancer aftercare, it's actually the same thing, right? Because I'm treating the patient. I'm not treating the cancer or the, or the migraine or the irritable bowel syndrome. I'm treating you. What does your body need to be its best? Okay, that's great. So I guess another way of looking at it also would be maintenance. Absolutely, absolutely. And and one the first part of maintenance is to detoxify every once in a while. And sadly, our planet is toxic. Our air is toxic. The ozone is thin. There's pesticides everywhere. There's chemicals everywhere. So every once in a while, our body could just use a little bit of a filter change, help help push things out a little bit. Um, so that we can keep up with our ability to filter and process all these toxins. That is also so interesting and so important. I have been hearing more and more of uh, about people who are having problems with their livers. Definitely. Yeah. Maybe you could elaborate a little bit on that as well. Definitely. There's, there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, just this week, I read a statistic that one third of the United States has some degree of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And that's when your liver is just overwhelmed and there's physical manifestations of chunks of fat stuck on your liver. And one of the purposes of a fat cell is to store the toxins. Now, ideally, not forever. Yes. <laughs> but but it's also related to IgG food sensitivities. It's also related to high-carb diets and insulin resistance. So our lifestyle creates these things. But also with why, why do livers look toxic so often? Another reason would be zinc deficiency. It's, it's such a common deficiency. And when zinc is missing, there's over 300 enzymes in your liver alone that require zinc. So you could be missing one nutrient and, and have thousands of repercussions. Because oh the first God. 300 are only in the liver, but yeah. zinc zinc is involved in approximately 2,000 chemical reactions in the body. So one deficiency, 2,000 consequences. That number is staggering. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and, and that is something we wouldn't feel, would we? Not until it got big enough, right? So there's different ways yeah. we can assess. So I, I have a bioimpedance analysis machine that can tell if there's toxicity at a cellular level. We look at the live cell microscope and, and that's very frequently used for prevention or cancer aftercare. And many times with the cancer survivor, they've been told that they're free of the cancer. Their physical exam and blood work with the medical doctor is normal. I, as a naturopath, will do extra physical exam stuff with tongue diagnosis or iris or look at their fingernails or what we call a nutritional physical. And I will also say your body physically looks and sounds and feels normal. Then we'll go look at the blood under a microscope and it's a mess. Right. Meaning you see a lot of white cells. Like what would be a mess? A mess could be we could see a tired immune system. We could see 
um, products of incomplete digestion. We can see free radical damage. Um, free radicals, if our listeners don't know, that's antioxidants sponge up free radicals. It's funny. Sometimes I, I tease and joke with my patients and they don't even know. So yeah. I'm entertaining myself. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I'll be having a conversation with the patient about antioxidants. And uh, I'll, I'll put you on the spot now and tease you. Do you know what an antioxidant is? I'm thinking blueberries. Yes. Okay. But, okay. I, but I think, and I know they're good to fight cancer and free radicals, but I don't, is that right? Or okay. Wrong? See, you know so more than average, okay. right? So, so, but, um, but most, can you but spell it out for us, please? So, yes. so I will ask most of the time when I ask a patient, do you know what an antioxidant is? Yes. And they're very proud and they go, yes, it's antioxidants. It's vitamin C. It's vitamin D. It's eating blueberries, drinking green tea. Absolutely. And then I'll say, do you know what a free radical is? Donna just went blank. Yeah. Something that can cause cancer, I think. But I don't know exactly what it is. Exactly. So please tell us. Exactly. Yes. So, so most people draw a blank, just like Donna just did. So, so the definition of an antioxidant is a food or a supplement um, that has the ability to negate a free radical. And free radical is like electromagnetic damage like rust in the body and so long standing exposure to free radical damage like suntans and smoking and stress and fried foods age us quicker so they're behind the scenes fueling the fire for autoimmune disease for cardiovascular disease for cancer so so when you're taking antioxidants it's to put out that fire but you can't feel that either. So people blindly take antioxidants and, and it is possible to take it too far because we do need a little bit of free radical activity in the body, but not free radical damage, right? And that is the key. Yeah. Okay. So but, but realistically, with the, the live blood cell tests, especially now, it's, it's late winter in Canada right now, so we see a lot of free radical damage on the linings of the red blood cells under our microscope because it's the end of winter and we haven't been eating well for the last six months, no matter how hard we tried, Yeah. right? Everything has been picked green in another country and imported to the great white north or we pickled it, froze it, canned it, preserved it and and we've we've been nourishing ourselves with foods that are not as vibrant as when we grow them ourselves. Very true. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So there's a huge world of you can't feel it, but I can find it for you. All right. And so I guess it would be wise for those of us to make appointments with our naturopaths. Would you say there's a certain thing, like even if we're feeling fine and you see that things are under control and you're just doing a little bit of tweaking, is there a formula to how often we should be doing maintenance, uh, making appointments? Would it be every few months, once a year? What would you suggest? I would say twice a year is the sweet spot because things okay. are, our bodies needs change seasonally, especially for us here in Canada. So there's a big difference with our lifestyle, our ability to get sun and fresh air and good food. So I lighten up the supplements in the summer. You don't need as many enzymes. You don't need the multi so much. You can take a break with the vitamin D for most people, right? Yes. And then by around October, it all comes back, right? Mm -hmm. So in, in cold season, we ha our body has different nutritional needs. And also, if, if you are detoxing, spring and fall are the best times. And if you're very eager, then I'd say, okay, once every season, every three months, right? Yeah. Um, so that would be, you know, really eager patient who's really staying on top of things. And um, let's say something with bone density. Once I've chosen the calcium, the medical doctors may not be checking the bones again until one to three years later. So I'm not going to tell the patient, come back in three years. I'm, I'm watching them every three months usually yes. to make sure, are you even digesting this calcium? Is it staying in the body or did I find it in your urine? Okay. Oh, it's winter now. We got to add the vitamin D. So, so we're adjusting it along the way. Fantastic. 
Well, thank you very much. My pleasure. Yes, and uh, thank you all for listening. Thank you, and let us know if there's any particular topic that you'd like to hear about because we're happy to cover it for you. Yes, and please send us your feedback and any questions you may have. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.